The ocean is the world's largest ecosystem. It covers over 70% of the Earth's surface. This video aims to explain the principal chemistry that affects this ecosystem, mainly on how the presence of dissolved gases and minerals affect organisms. The ocean's vitality is dependent on nutrients, which are distributed throughout the ocean via convection currents. When water is heated at the equator, it becomes less dense and moves to the north and south poles, pulling more water up from the bottom of the sea. When the water reaches the north and south poles, it cools, becoming more dense and salty as it sinks and moves back to the equator. This process is very slow. It leaves most of the dissolved gases and nutrients at the bottom, while the depleted water stays at the surface, where the sun shines. Winds play a crucial role in distributing nutrients, disturbing the ocean's surface, creating uplifts of cold, rich water. Uplifts also occur where the ocean meets the shoreline. Phytoplankton, such as algae and cyanobacteria, are the base of the aquatic food chain. When these organisms perform photosynthesis, they consume carbon and produce oxygen in a one-to-one -one ratio. They require carbon, nutrients, and sunlight to grow. Diatoms require silicate in the form of orthosilicic acid in order to produce their glass shells. Wherever there is a significant concentration of orthosilicic acid, diatoms will dominate the microcosm. When diatoms are deficient in iron, they have been known to gorge themselves on silicate, leaving water deprived of it. This normally happens around Antarctica. Another essential mineral is calcium. Calcium is an important cofactor. Calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate are the skeletal materials for many organisms, such as coccolithophores, foraminifera, corals, mollusks, echinoderms, crustaceans, and vertebrates. Coccolithophores are microalgae that acquire scales of calcium carbonate, or calcite. They are estimated to dump over 1.4 billion kilograms of calcite per year into the ocean, which turns into chalk and limestone over time. Calcite is also the main component to the seafloor sediment. Because of this, calcium concentrations are more variable than other minerals. Phosphate is among the key minerals needed to sustain life. It is involved in many important biological molecules and chemical processes. It is also a limiting factor in many aquatic ecosystems. When certain environments are fertilized with phosphate, the population of phytoplankton increases. Phytoplankton get their carbon indirectly from the air. The ocean holds 50 times more carbon than the atmosphere. Most carbon enters the oceans from river runoff, rain, and the breaking of waves against the shoreline. 88% of the carbon in the ocean exists as bicarbonate. 11% exists as carbonate. When carbon dioxide dissolves, it reacts with water to form carbonic acid, which then reacts with carbonate, creating two bicarbonate ions. This process increases the acidity of the ocean, diminishing the water's ability to react with carbon dioxide. Thus, when there is more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the ocean absorbs proportionally less of it. Increasing ocean acidity also has the effect of withering rocks and seafloor sediment releasing calcium carbonate, phosphate, and iron into the ocean. When there is an excessive nutrient influx from rivers, human waste deposit, or from undersea volcanic eruptions, the population of phytoplankton explodes, sequestering a huge amount of carbon into biomass. Like bacteria in a petri dish, the population will eventually exceed the supply of available nutrients, causing an imminent collapse, leaving the water acidic and deprived of oxygen as bacteria consume the organic matter. This is called a dead zone. Nitrogen fixation decreases ocean acidity. Nitrogen is one of the most essential elements for life. It is a necessary component of all proteins and nucleotides, and comprises 78% of the atmosphere. Organisms fixate elemental nitrogen by reacting it with acids to produce ammonium. This requires a large amount of energy, and the protein complex that facilitates this reaction can be permanently sabotaged by oxygen, since oxygen reacts with its iron cofactor. For this reason, nitrogen is primarily fixed in dead zones and under seafloor sediment. Ferrous iron is used by all organisms in some way. It is essential for nitrogen fixation and photosynthesis. The wind is responsible for a large amount of iron fertilization. Most of the iron in the Atlantic comes from dust blown from the Sahara and the Kalahari deserts. Iron deficiency is a major problem in many parts of the ocean. It limits the growth of phytoplankton and the availability of food for larger organisms. There have been plans to artificially fertilize certain areas with iron in order to encourage the growth of phytoplankton that sequester carbon from the atmosphere and improve the ecology. These efforts face huge political opposition. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. It barely scratches the surface of what goes on in the ocean. I hope it will inspire you to learn more about the blood of our planet.